Now to set the table to discuss the differences between the gastric bypass and the sleeve, I'm going to review the anatomy for each of them and how it's done and how it works. We're going to begin with the sleeve operation. And so again, this is done minimally invasive with little incisions. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a surgical stapler to cut up along this edge of the stomach and we're going to literally remove 70-80% of the stomach here, take it out of the body. And this is going to work for you in two ways. One thing is that you're going to have a smaller stomach, you won't hold as much food. And then what's also important is that there's a very powerful hormonal effect. Now, to get into that hormonal effect, I'm going to digress just for a second. This is an interlude. And uh, just to remind you, as you've seen in other videos, that we understand that the obesity disease is actually an imbalance in the hormone mechanisms. Your body has a powerful, constantly functioning, unconscious fat control system. And it makes sense that you have a powerful fat control system because a little bit of fat is a survival resource. And so this fat control system is controlling your fat storage at a certain level, just like it controls your blood pressure at a certain level, just like it controls your breathing, it controls your temperature at a certain level. These things happen all the time without you actually thinking about it. And uh, in the U.S. and worldwide, for different reasons for different people, this fat control system gets out of balance and the system uh, starts to try to uh, um, hold on to excess fat. Think of it as like a fat thermostat that is stuck at an abnormally high level and conceptually the term that we use is set point. And so the set point is stuck at an abnormally high level. Why does this interlude matter? Why is it worth talking about? Because the sleeve and the gastric bypass, they do work through restricting the food that you can hold. There's a smaller amount of food, but more importantly, we need to change that set point and work on the hormone levels. And so the cool thing that does not show up on the diagram is that when we remove this part of the stomach with the sleeve, we're taking out some of the hunger hormones. Ghrelin is one of them. It's probably more complicated than that. And when we take out those hunger hormones, we make a situation that the patient doesn't feel like they need as much food. The actual appetite and the hunger level drops down in a way that's sustainable and lasts for many years. So once again, with the sleeve, there's a smaller stomach and it's not so much that a person can't hold as much food, that's true, but more important that they don't want as much food. For those of you who are watching and are my science and physiology nerds, I feel compelled to let you know that what I'm saying with the ghrelin and hormone removal on the sleeve and with the foregut theory on gastric bypass, um, these are probably just part of the story and um, they may not even be the full story and science is going to take many years to develop an accurate picture, um, but it's fair to say that these are accurate representations of how people feel with a restriction on the amount of food they can eat and a smaller desire for food. Uh, in fact, there are probably many different hormonal underpinnings for this obesity disease. In other words, people probably have the obesity condition for different reasons across the spectrum. Um, and there are definite physiologic changes that go on with both the sleeve and the gastric bypass that I did not mention in those earlier discussions. For example, uh, both operations involve healthy transitions in the colon microbiome. That's the normal bacterial contents of the colon from an unhealthy balance to a healthy balance. Balance. Similarly, both of them involve healthy changes in the bile salt composition. Um, people who suffer from the obesity condition have an unhealthy mix of bile salts that transitions to a more healthy mix in the context of both the sleeve and the gastric bypass. Those things may or may not turn out to be key factors for all patients, maybe some patients. Um, and many of these changes are happening over a matter of millimeters and centimeters within the bloodstream, the bloodstream of the intestine, the portal system, or they may be happening in the nerve system because the whole intestinal system has its own sort of like second brain. Um, and so I think the research to elucidate these mechanisms is going to take many years.